Constructing the Olympics is a huge challenge. Um, the head of the IOC uh, told me a long time ago that in order to successfully deliver the Olympics, you would have to mobilise your nation as if you were going to war. It is stupendously big. It is an order of magnitude bigger than anything else you ever run. We're trying to deliver the Games in London, which is already a world city, which already has its day-to-day -day operating constraints and so on. Failure is clearly not an option when you're delivering the Olympic Games. It's no use ringing. Jack Rogg and saying, by the way, Jack, old pal, we're going to run it in 2013, you know. I think it'll redefine the way people think about the place of the engineer in society. The ability of the engineer to make a difference and change the world, that's really what drives us. Cities, uh, where most people now live, and indeed all aspects of civilization are based around uh, or fundamentally are supported by what civil engineers do. If you think about transport and energy and water, these are all fundamental necessities of human life. Engineering is fundamentally what makes the world work. Engineering is the heart of every single thing that we do. Uh, when we get on a transport system, it's fundamentally created by engineers. When we go to switch on the light, all of that energy is created by and distributed by and delivered to us by engineers. I can't think of anything that we do, really, as, that, as we go through the, the day where engineers don't have an influence. One of the first projects that we had to uh, commit to when we came back from Singapore was undergrounding 13 kilometres of power lines. Never done in this country before. The clock was ticking. Um, you know, the engineering of getting up and over the central line and then under the main um, channel tunnel rail box, you know, an incredibly um, precise bit of engineering, uh, four tunnel boring machines sort of, you know, racing against time to, to get it done. And of course, now everyone forgets that the power lines were over there in the, in the first place. I think the easiest way of describing it is the games are shifting the geography of London. As Robin Wells, the mayor of Newham, put it, east is the new west. And we we're taking four of the most deprived boroughs in the whole of the UK and radically transforming them. There were quite a few engineering problems um, to solve on this project. Number one is actually where we are. We're, we're on a brownfield site. This used to be the old West Ham tip. So actually there's all kinds of gases and contaminated ground that we've had to deal with. I remember seven, eight years ago going to the site and it was a post-industrial landscape. So. Uh, the local landmark was Fridge Mountain, which is just basically a graveyard of fridges. All the rivers were sort of running the wrong way up, full of burnt out cars and shopping trolleys. I mean, it was a very degraded, neglected post-industrial landscape. The public very often don't uh, see the infrastructure which we're so dependent upon. And in the case of uh, the Stratford site, we've spent more money on infrastructure than we have on the stadia. That infrastructure either is unseen, in the case of the cable tunnels, the new sewage system, the new distribution networks for all the different utilities, uh, the roads which, bridges, the bridges which people, 35 bridges that people will just walk over and be oblivious to the fact that they're even on a bridge. Uh, so all of that is taken for granted. And we all do it every day when we go about our daily lives. I think the industry has raised the bar on the Olympics by demonstrating that a hugely complex undertaking can be delivered to cost, on schedule and safely and basically as near as you can get to the middle of London. Exciting engineering innovation on this project has manifested itself in all sorts of forms. Uh, the velodrome is a triumph in terms of saying uh, how do we take a roof structure which was going to weigh a thousand tonnes and turn it into a roof structure which only weighs 100 tonnes, rather like a spider's web, but still supports the roof. As you can see behind you, this is a really long span roof. This is like over 120 metres from one side to the other. So the biggest challenge was spanning that uh, with a clear view, best view for the spectators, and that's where the use of a cable net came in. Undoubtedly people get very excited about the, the form of the aquatic centre, which is an architectural uh, issue in the first place, but it's engineers who make the most fantastic architectural forms um, stand up. Everyone was sort of held their breath when the roof was sort of being um, sort of slotted together and then sort of jacked up and then sort of locked down in position. 
but you know you couldn't help but be absolutely fascinated and drawn into that as a, a construction and, and design project, even as a, as a, as a non-engineer. If you look at the Olympic Stadium, for instance, would you believe that much of the steel was actually redundant scrap steel that was going to be used for a gas pipeline in the north of England? Our contractors found it, we changed the designs to allow it to be used, and therefore we reduced massively the carbon footprint. It is not only about delivering an on-time and within-budget project, but it's doing it in a way that sort of enhances the public perception or the reputation of the industry for actually being able to do things better, uh, safer, and in a way that reflects the sort of priorities of society now, particularly, for instance, in regards to sustainability. We haven't done a carbon cutout games, you know, we've done it our own way. So everything from the, the whole approach to sustainability, the whole approach to architecture, uh, we've got more temporary uh, venues than any other games in history before. And again, that brings its own challenges, you know, the engineering team designing and delivering a temporary 12,000 seat uh, basketball venue that will be fantastic for the games, but then can be reused, recycled um, and relocated elsewhere post-games. One of the solutions we lit upon is we'll reuse the high-speed lines for 16 days of the Olympic Games and we'll create an effective temporary metro system off the back of that. The thing for us in terms of engineering is you have to be able to think out of the box. You have to think up alternate solutions, generate them, bomb-proof them and then make them come to life very rapidly by fixed deadlines. I think that the Games provide a fairly unique opportunity, certainly within my working career so far, to really showcase what it is that engineers actually do. Whether you're looking at the infrastructure, the transport, the water, the energy, the waste, whichever of those, it really draws out the way in which all of those play a part in delivering major projects. I would hope that that in itself has started to inspire the future generations of engineers, perhaps those who already knew they had an interest, but ideally also those who now might want to go and find out more. Being a member of the Institution of Civil Engineers, being a civil engineer, has provided me with an unforgettable life. I joined it originally inspired by the strapline of the, of the institution at the time, which was harnessing the resources of nature for the benefit of mankind. I thought, that sounds, that sounds okay. It's been a challenging and enormously rewarding uh, period in, in my career. Probably the pinnacle, uh, I, I suspect. Changing the whole face of the world is exciting. Changing the way society operates, changing the whole way people think about London. If that doesn't get you going, nothing will.